be, but probably who knows what time. I don't care. Good, whatever you're having, uh, welcome to the stream. Um, now, last time we were looking at Twitch Leaflet Replit, and um, I got lost in actually what we were doing. Uh, we're doing sort of a bottom-up programming thing, uh, which which works really well, but at some point I wanted to go back up to the top and make sure that uh, we can merge our uh, top-down and bottom-up programming so things will actually happen. So we're going to look at the, uh, the, the index.html file, how we want to call these maps, uh, what we're going to do, and how we're going to create maps. And to be honest, I have done no preparation for this. Uh, so I'm going to just ramble on incoherently, which I've always done, but you know, and now I'm going to tell you I'm doing it. So we're also going to create a notes file to sort of get a handle on what we're doing here. Okay, so if we look at the index.html file, um, the, the key point here is when we create maps, uh, and that is, again, a lot of this is not map creation. Um, a lot of this is just getting data and stuff, which is good, but it's not what we're doing right now. Okay, um, let's see. So we create a tile layer here, that's not a map. And then, oh, here it is, okay, so basically we just create a map here and that's a leaflet map. And then what we do is we add a tile layer to it. And if the tile layer happens to be a URL, we can use this shortcut called tile layer. Uh, and that is gonna be fine for OpenStreetMap and even for my server side uh, Perl script. It's not gonna work if we're gonna create the map locally. So what we really wanna do here is now test with a map that we create locally. And I don't think we have any of those. So uh, let's see, console log map get bounds, each layer, okay. Place, well, we do actually, we, we do this place fake tiles on map, blah, blah, blah. And, and it does work. Um, but we don't really have it as a map here in our map list. We just sort of clutched it into the update view. So we might wanna be a little bit cleaner with that and have like a list of maps that we wanna do in, in the main subroutine and then update, we'll go through that sort of list or array of maps. Although again, if we're using tile layers, you're not gonna have to do that because basically uh, Leaflet does it for you. So we, we don't have to do that, but we do for the ones we create ourselves. Um, so this is looking okay so far. And again, this really should be outside of here and, and, and somewhere else. Uh, namely, up in the same area where we're creating these two tiles. Well, basically, up in this area right here. Okay, so uh, we've been working for some time on like a, what I call a buffer, um, a buffer map, which is going to show a buffer around a, a point. We're going to go back to that, but I'm going to be focusing more sort of on making sure that we we sort of normalize it, so we can we can create it here in the index.html and not necessarily have to sort of clutch it into the update view like this other one is. And after that, we are gonna fix this and I'm gonna make a to-do note to do that. Um, not subroutine. Okay. And the notes we're gonna do here, so what we wanna, what we sort of wanna do is get an idea of exactly what's going on here. Uh, and so let's go ahead and go over to notes. And what we wanna have is sort of a map we don't necessarily call it that because Leaflet already has a map. Um, we'll just call it map in parentheses. And we're going to call it an object even though we're probably just going to hitch it on to the uh, L t map object that Leaflet creates. Okay. Um, um, how to draw tiles, uh, which is name of a function. So how to draw tiles will give us name of a function that returns a PNG image. So we're gonna be very uh, clear on that, uh, being a little bit more precise now. So the function is expected to return a PNG image corresponding, well, okay, let's even go a little bit further. So, corresponding to a given XYZ tile. So we've, we've, we've specified our specifications. Yeah, I know that's right. Um, so our, the function is the job of taking it might get more stuff. Um, by the way, let me add to to do if I haven't already separate. Okay, good, I have done that. Um, because I'm, I don't really like the fact that I'm changing the input object. That's really ugly. And we won't, we will break that habit today. Okay, so we need to, the map object needs to know how to draw the tiles. Um, okay. And let's see, name a function that returns a PNG image corresponding to a given X, Y, Z. So th these are the maps we're making ourselves, obviously. Um, and then 
when updating map, what we'll need to do, first we'll need to find the map extents. In other words, which um, XY tiles are showing for a given Z. And the Z is going to be given by the leaflet. LMAP has that Z property in it. I don't think it has X and Y because usually we're showing multiple tiles. Um, for a given Z value. And the sort of weird thing with this, we have a function that does this. Um, we'll need to draw XY tile. Let's make a, go ahead and make a note of this too. Um, must draw XY tiles that are only partly on map. So we have to handle the edge cases as well. So it's a little bit, that's where we get into the floor and ceiling functions, but that's what we do. Okay. Um, so the, when updating the map, we have to find the map extents. Um, then we have to call the draw tiles function um, for each tile we want to fill. And then we're going to use image overlay. So we're going to get the tile and we're going to image overlay right away. There's a problem with this. And I should have mentioned it up here. Um, and we can actually do it in either order. We need to delete the tiles we've drawn previously, or the image overlays. We'll call it more precise here. Um, because once we go to a new, uh, we don't want to have the, we had the problem earlier where the uh, tiles came up on top of each other, which made a huge mess. So we do have to delete the ones we drew previously. Uh, we can do that before we draw the new tiles or after. And uh, after is sort of nice because you never end up with a blank screen, but you do end up with, briefly end up with some overlap. But that's okay. Okay, so that's what we do when we update the map. Um, and again, this doesn't apply to the uh, tile maps. Uh, Leaflet handles that on its own separate thread, I think, whatever. Okay. So now let's um, let's talk about the uh, draw tile function, uh, the function um, that returns a PNG. Okay, uh, determines values of some sort for each uh, for given tile. Do I want to be? Do I want to say that? Yes. I, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. For each pixel in a given tile. So we're already going through all the tiles that are available, but each tile will have 256 by 256. So this is 65,536 pixels. It's going to assign a value to each of them. Use a given color function to draw a PNG and return it. So this is something we've, we've already, this is all stuff we're doing, but now that it's sort of laid out nicely, uh, and I can refer back to it uh, if, I, if I need to. And before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and git save this because of my a desire to get save everything. Um, apparently I changed quite a bit of stuff, didn't I? I? Added notes, did some other stuff. This is how it's always going to be, unfortunately. The, 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 the importance of doing this is more that I can roll back to uh, a previous point if I want to. Um, okay, so now knowing this, we're going to go back to the file list. Let's go ahead and take a look at our uh, at our, I think we're pretty close to finishing uh, bcmaps.js, the buffer function. Let's look at uh, play fake tiles on map is another one. We need to change some of the names of these functions. They're not, uh, buffer tiles is actually a pretty good name. So buffer tiles, and this is really ugly looking. I'm not super, sorry. This is really ugly looking. I'm not super happy with this uh, because it's really ugly to pass things like this. We're basically saying this is a function that can draw many different buffer tiles. Oh, cool. Um, that can draw many different buffer tiles, and we have to give it extra parameters to tell what buffer tile we want to draw. But I'm not happy with the way we're passing those input parameters by using extra params, a separate object. And I might do something about this, even if it's as simple as renaming extra params to params. Okay. So let's see what we're doing here. Now, this, what we did previously is we actually drew, when we did this for place, um, flake, yeah, fake tiles on map. We actually did uh, create a canvas. No, we didn't. Okay. Um, hmm. Oh, you know what? This, I think, maybe does more than what we needed to do. Yes, it does. This actually also calls, this also determines the extents 
And then what we do here is image overlay. How are we creating that image though? Oh, we might have a different function to do that. Um, let URL equals object tile function, blah, 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 extra parameters. Yeah, man, I wish I commented in my code. Um, okay. I get the feeling that the work is being done in some other, because I remember the, the, the work, the, the, uh, the function that does this had a bunch of print statements in it because it was drawing to a canvas. So let's see if we can, um, let overlay equals your, oh, you are, okay, that's it. So we're actually calling, um, tile function. Yes, because we're given a tile function. God. Okay, and what tile function are we given? We have to go back to index.html for that. And I think I now remember how I, I'm doing all this magic. Yeah, there it is. Create fake slippy tile. And I'm gonna go to its, I'm not gonna go to its definition because of course we're not gonna find it here. Um, and I keep, I need to merge staging in the real one. Here we are. So in create fake slippy tile, we do create a canvas and then we do draw on that canvas. Uh, in this case, because we're doing, uh, we just need pixels, we can actually just create an image directly. We don't have to put it on top of a canvas. So that was the point I was making. Um, and uh, we have a buffer function existing, so you'll sort of see the codes you know, bef below this code commented out. And I believe it's an image overlay. Um, no, it's a rate of PNG. God damn, I'll write a lot of functions. Not a bad idea, really, but... Um, um, so that long latitude, so distance, um, yeah, so this was going to be a draw, this is going to be drawing on the context, but we don't need to do that. What we do need to do, so let's go ahead and get rid of all this uh, canvas stuff. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to create an image, and I think that's what array to PNG does. Uh, and we can, we can look at that and put it in the, uh, oh wow, do we have a little place for scratch? We will create a scratch. Uh, even though that's still going to be a pain to switch between two files. I don't know if this can actually do two files at once. Can it? God only knows. Yeah. Well, I'm going to, I don't know if it can do more, more than one file at a time. It'd be really nice like if, like, Emacs, you could switch between files. But Replit ain't Emacs. R-A-E. So, let's go ahead and look at the definition, and then, uh, well, let's go ahead and create a scratch file first. Some people like to put zero zeros in front. Nope, not in the lib light. We want to put it right out here. Some people actually uh, put like zero zeros in front of this stuff so that it could goes to the top or the bottom. Not quite that desperate yet, but uh, but it is a, a possibility. Now, even though we're uh, we're um, get getting this, maybe get hubbing this. I'm going to download this as a zip because I do think in case that doesn't work, I need something that's reliable. All right, so let's go ahead and look at BC lib staging. We probably I'll keep that there, but we're not going to do anything with it. All right, so let's go ahead and look at array to PNG. Oh, not array to OBG. That would be something very different. And let's see if we can find the definition. And wonderful. Again, Replit really has some issues. Um, oh, wow, it works. Okay, so here it is, function AR. Uh, and see, this is really a very simple function. It just basically creates an image data object and then fills it up with, uh, with pixels. That's very simple. Go ahead and cut and paste that into our scratch. And then let's go ahead and go back over here. So that image. Now we're only going to be doing one here. So this is going to be. So this is going to be just a very simple image. 256 by 256. Um, and we don't even need to do all this because we're going to be filling the image data in order. It just turns out because of the way we're doing our uh, loops. Uh, except maybe I've got it sideways. I need to check that. But aside from that, so we don't need really a lot of this. The big things we need are create the image or the image data and then just fill it in bite by bite. We could almost, and this is why probably why I wrote array to PNG in the first place, we could almost just uh, map a function over these pixels and over these uh, pixels and, uh, you know, just the result would be image data data i. And apparently we do have to create a, um, we do have to create a canvas to hold the image. Um, and I'm not gonna question that right now, but I, I'm guessing we should be able to return an image without having to create a canvas for it. But hey, I'm not gonna fight that. 
So in fact, I'm gonna, I lied about what earlier. We're just gonna cut and paste this code into the R code and then tweak it as necessary. So I, no point in having that file there. Okay, so let's go back over here. This is a, a buffer tile. So what it does is it goes through the, um, and I think the image data is in the format of, uh, you know, uh, each uh, column row. In other words, you fill in the first row's columns, second row's columns, and so on. And I think this is probably backwards, but that's not a huge deal. Okay, so let long lat equals, this is, let me, um, let me say that my, um, my creation of all these functions is taking objects and returning objects, or in this case, returning the same object, may not be ideal. I'm beginning to think maybe some functions could be written with multiple parameters. Uh, but for right now, let's, let's just go with this. This is ugly for other reasons, because we have to compute the latitude and longitude of each pixel, send it to the GCD function, and, um, and then measure the distance, and if it's greater than, so, oh, let's, sorry, we need to create an image. So, let's see, where did I paste this crap? Oh, where did I paste this crap? Oh, I haven't pasted it yet. So, let's just... Yay, more crap. Okay, so we need new image data. Put that right up here. And in our case, it's just all these tiles. And at some point, I'm going to put a to-do note here. Um, OSM does allow you to have 512 by 512 tiles, but more importantly, someone somewhere in the future might allow t tiles that aren't, you know, 256, 56, or 512 by 512. Um, to be so at some point, we do actually want to be able to create arbitrary tiles from this. But for right now, we're just going to simplify as 256. Um, okay, well, I'm going to be a little bit nicer about this. Uh, height. So we're going to at least be consistent here. So the um, this is the width. Pretty sure this is the order. If it's not, it's going to not break for us because we're using the same thing. So for i, we're going to go from uh, i is the longitude. Doesn't really matter. We're going to go from width and we're going to go from width here. Okay, fantastic. And I think this 256 we can leave as is. Well, do we? Uh, Fudge. So the X is the. Um, oh, I see what's wrong. I. Okay, I need to flip my coordinates here, and I, I will do that because it's actually important. So the outer loop is going to go from in through rows. The inner loop is going to go through columns. Okay, and I think if I backwards in here, we'll fix it in just a sec. Um, so J is going to correspond to the X value. Y is going to correspond. I is going to correspond to the Y value. Okay. So here, um, the x coordinate is going to be dependent on j. This shouldn't be that hard to fix, actually. And we will say it's going to be divided by the width. Again, it's never, ever going to come up, but, you know, whatever. And the y function is going to be dependent on i, and it will be divided by the height. Again, totally nothingness here. Okay. Um, except I made a broken stuff, which is always cool. All right, so now we have GC dist equals this, and I think we need no. Actually, I think we're fine. Um, so image data is going to be an array, at least if we're looking down here and I'm thinking correctly. Uh, image data is okay, image data equals this. Image data i. Okay, so. Data, sorry, image data data is going to be a uh, is going to be an array. So we can just push something onto it. We, let's be careful what we push onto it. So if distance is greater than five thousand, um, really less than five thousand. The distance in miles is less than five thousand. We're going to push. Um, what do I call my image data? That I'm a moron. Oh, I called it image data. Brilliant name. Data. This is an array, so we can push onto it, and what we will push onto it is a subarray called. Let's see. We want red, so let's say 255, zero, zero. And again, this will be. And oh, sorry. Opacity will be 255. I don't know if we can get away without uh, putting the opacity in there, but let's not experiment that right now. And if it's greater than 5,000 or equal to 5,000, um, 
we still need to put something there. We're going to put the empty... We're going to put, put a pixel that you would think is black, but because it's transparent black, it's, em it's just nothing. It's the transparent pixel. Okay. So now... Um, yeah, let's leave that debugging routine in there. And we need to actually create better debugging routines. This is kind of ugly. Uh, let's see. So we've done this. We've done this part where we fill in the image data. And now we're going to have to create a canvas. By the way, creating a canvas called canvas might interfere with an existing document. So again, this maybe we should change. Um, all right, so we should now be able to modify this code. And this is outside the i and j loops here. Okay. Set width and height. And in this case, it's just going to be height and width that we've already had, which is going to be 256 in these cases. Ooh, that was fun. Okay. And then we're not going to return it because this is a function that returns uh, put image data. Okay. So this is, uh, we're going to return OBJ. And the output object. Uh, the ping file. The data, the URL, data URL of the ping file. So here, and I realize this is really ugly. In fact, it's so ugly I want to refactor, and I will refactor. But for right now, I wanted to sort of get the uh, get uh, get back to what we were doing in the first place, which is trying to see if we can even do this. So we, I wanted to test that before we. Uh, so we're going to say object PNG equals. Uh, can oh wow I deleted that didn't I? Canvas two data URL. Is that what I had before? I hope so. Okay, and then we're going to just return object like we always do. Okay. There must be a better... Well, you know what? There isn't. You know, I made an uglier way to do it, though. Those are comments from the old one. Okay. So now... I think we had a test function down here at the very bottom. Yeah, we did. Buffer tile. Um... Buffer tile, extra params. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, welcome to my stream. Um, give me one second. Did that help? Uh, I, the one problem is I can't hear myself, but let me go ahead and put myself on. Okay. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Okay, I'm going to reset this, although it sounds okay to me. Okay, I'm going to reset this, although it sounds okay to me. Okay, that really sucked. Okay, that really sucked. Okay, how about now? How about now? Nope, still bad. One, two, three. One, two, three.
Okay, testing. Okay, testing. Echo test. Echo test. Echo test. Okay, that sounded okay to me. There is a little bit of static in the background. Let me see what I can do about that. Oh, man. I, I hate doing this in the middle of a stream. I could change my audio input from whatever I'm hearing uh, just to the to the microphone, which might give us a better a better signal. Um, well, let's go ahead and experiment with this since pretty much no one watches this except for me. Um, all right, so this might break audio totally, or it might fix audio totally. Okay, now ugly audio should be back. Let me kill off. Okay, now ugly audio should be back. Let me kill off. Okay, now ugly audio should be back. Let me. Okay, now you should only hear the mic. Okay, now you should only hear the mic. Uh, I still hear some okay, now buzzing. Only hear the mic. God damn it. God damn it. The four second delay is really obnoxious when you're trying to listen to how you the sound. The four second delay is really obnoxious when you're trying to listen to how you the sound. The four second delay is really obnoxious when you're trying to listen to how you the sound. The four second delay is really obnoxious when you're trying to... That was pretty cool. Um, let me make... I will make a note to fix this next time. Um, actually, there's a settings here. Oh, man, I don't really want to do this in the middle of doing this. So it's built in. I'm not doing it from my microphone. I'm doing it from... Uh, the audio, the pulse audio input capture, which does have settings uh, to change this, but hopefully um, I can be heard well enough that uh, uh, that people can. You know what? I'm going to make a note to both listen to this recording and um, of current. Okay, and check mic, phone, and headphone hardware and listen to yourself. So the, the, the issue here is it's very difficult to actually monitor my own audio uh, because it creates an echo. Uh, but I will do that on like a test stream or something so we can uh, so we can so I can get this fixed up. But I think I know what to do. I think it's basically 
I'm giving too much background background noise, too much of a uh, of a uh, mix, um, but uh, of a uh, mix. Uh, but I'm hesitant to change midstream. Okay, we will now return to the code. Uh, by the way, uh, thank you for commenting, Sant uh, Santana, Santana. No, not quite Santana. Santatnus. I don't know how to pronounce that. I should, but I don't. If you have any questions about what I'm doing or are interested in doing something else, let me know. You're the only... You're Santa. Santa Atmos. Okay. Um, oh, like saint. Santa is female saint. Santa Fe, of course, means holy faith. But that's different. Usually Santa means female saint. Um, okay. So if you have any questions or whatever, let me know. And I'm happy to do something else because you're literally the only viewer, well, something else that's vaguely related to JavaScript and programming. You're the only viewer, so I'm happy to do it. Okay, so let's go back to the index file here. And now we're going to create a buffer. We're going to create one that has a buffer tile. We're going to create a map that has a, uh, let's see, tile layer. Um, oh, no, actually, we're doing this ugliness here. Where we're updating it inside of this routine, which is wrong, but... And so now we need to call. Oh, it is still place fake tiles on map because that is the uh, that is the name of the terrible name of the function that does all of this. We're going to put it on this map. The opacity for right now is going to be one, and the only thing I need to update is presumably the tile function, which is now um, uh, tile func. Is it? I think it's tile func. Um, at this point, I'm just going to sort of an extra params, which is the ugly bit here. But that's okay. We can actually still do this, and that is going to be a lat zero long. So we're basically looking for points uh, that are within 5,000 miles of where the prime meridian ex uh, intersects the equator, and it's not going to work. I can pretty much guarantee you that. But you know what the hell? Let's not find out what actually does happen. Life's an adventure. Okay. And now. I can, of course, we have that zoom going in, which we can... We have, like, all sorts of layers here. Yeah, maybe I should have picked a lower zoom level. And, as you can see, it did not work. We do not have anything um, showing up here. So let's debug that real quick. We probably want to rename the... Uh, oh, cool. Cool, my mouse is frozen. Is it, is it actually trying to draw the red circle and it's just really slow? Yeah, I can't move the mouse. So maybe it's working. And maybe it's not. And if it is this slow, it wasn't the last time I tried it. It was actually pretty quick. Although I tried it on my home machine, not on Replit, so that could be an issue. Uh, well, this is just stuck now. I'm going to do a reload. This time I'm going to do sort of a zoom and move, anti-zoom move, just... We're not going very far. Oh. Fixed. So it's broken again. Okay, so maybe I'm doing horrible things here. I mean, I'm trying to draw, like, a, close to a million, t you know, compute a million distances. So it's not trivial what I'm doing. Um, but let's go ahead and console log some of this bullshit, see what's going on. Okay, so let's go back over here. Uh, BC maps, BC dist, that's fine. Um, well, hopefully it's fine. Um, nope, we're not looking for that. We're looking for buffer tile, which I think is the, not the... Oh, I probably shouldn't be calling it here, though. Since I now have it as a, uh, as, as a natural map. Okay. So, fine. 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 Frozen. I wonder if that's just because I'm, I've done something bad with my listeners. Uh, because... I can still zoom. Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe it's just something I've done with my listeners that doesn't let me drag the map anymore. Uh, which is bad, because obviously I, I should not be... Uh, well, I can't, I can't zoom. I can't move the uh, the mouse. Um, I can't drag the map, I mean. All right, all right. So let's go back to... Well, let's see if what this does. I mean, the moves here are going to be totally invisible to us. But I was hoping that would fix the mouse, which it did not. Okay, terrible things are happening. So let's go over here. This is GC dist, and I think this is buffer tile up here. 
Nope, somewhere up here. Um, I, I'll feel really bad if I deleted it somehow. Although we do have a backup. Here we go. Okay, so now we want to know what the PNG actually is, if it's even being created correctly. So what we can do here, this is going to be very ugly looking, this is going to be a hideous looking thing. So you know what, maybe I will also... Now we're only re returning PNG for the visible tile, so that's not that bad. There's going to be like 12 of them. So let's see what this does. So far, not a hell of a lot. Okay, did I actually call it buffer tile correctly in the, um, while I was being really glib in index.html? No, I, oh, god damn it, I called it tile funk. How stupid am I? Let's try it this way. Let's see if it works when you do it correctly. I don't think it will, actually, but, well, actually, let's look at it over here. Okay, image data data push is not a function. Okay, well, I'm pretty sure you can push to JavaScript arrays, but I'm also pretty sure I don't know that much about JavaScript, so let's see if that works. I want to see if I have a place here where I do dot .push. Um, JavaScript push to array. It's going to open in a new tab. I'm very excited about that. Uh, well, there is an array push method. So that should not be an issue, but I kind of think it's going to... Uh, you know what, I'm going to... Let's not be that clever here. I mean, I know you can assign to image data, data, uh, whatever, because I've done that before. Somewhere in here I've... Um, I write a PNG, right, right, so that's... Uh, which I've deleted now. Um, Buffer tile. So instead of saying image data data push, which should work. All right, this is really ugly. So we'll just declare a variable called count, and then we'll just say here image data data. We want to assign it and then increment it. this. Well, actually, it's going to equal the whole array now, because we're not pushing anymore. Or... this. So now here, we should just have a... Uh, we should just be filling it in using the count. Oh, you know what? Yeah, that's fine. And since it's an else, Count will only be incremented once. Still won't work, but let's see what it does. Okay, not working. No errors on the console. Let's see what the result looks like. Here we go. Oh. Okay, this is. <laughs> I do not recommend you do this, but data. We can actually take this, the image that it returns, which it's actually returning an image. See what that image looks like, which will be pretty much blank unless we happen to be on the, the center tile, which we're not. But it sounds like it's actually doing what it's supposed to do, so now let's see if we can, um, we can look at the, uh, look at the, if it, this works, I'll be amazed. And I really do need to refix the folks if we're going to keep doing this, or center the buffer on Albuquerque. And as you can see, it beautifully does not work. At least my mouse is back, though. Okay. Tile zero, zero, zero. So we're going to now test, and in this tile, 5,000 miles will be like, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but it's going to be like really, really small. But it should still be there, is, is the issue. Um, so we're going to reset this to be zero, zero, zero. Um, and the nice thing there is there will be only one tile in the entire frame. I mean, there's this gray area up here, down here, and there's repeats. Uh, and notice this is actually zero, minus one, zero, whatever, you know, it's just weird. But the only tile that's going to try to paint is zero, 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 so it'll be nice and simple. So let's go ahead and do that over here, and I'm pretty sure I did a set zoom and stuff here, so I think I know how to fix this. 
Um, zero. So did I center the map somewhere? or did, No, I know I centered it on Albuquerque because otherwise it wouldn't be showing up in that weird place. Otherwise it would be just the center of the earth. Guy la <laughs> guy. Uh oh, are we going to move our guy? Or are we just, I think we can just center somewhere that's not the guy. Let's just look for the word center. No results, of course. There might be another thing that it's called. Map dot set view zero. So this is correct. This is, well, it's zero, 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 but uh, this is correct. And then I change it somewhere, obviously. Set view. Oh, there it is. So in fact, we can leave this here, but just not not change the map from its sort of default view. Let's rock and roll. Let's do this. <laughs> our little guy is still showing up. The, this is, I think, an exaggeration of how big our guy is, but that's okay. So now we can look at the uh, one and only. Okay. Now this is distressing because it appears to be returning a PNG image for every single pixel, which is not correct. Either that or I'm just sort of putting it in the wrong place. Um, so am I outside both loops here? God, I hope so. Oh my god, I'm not. Wow. And so this is actually the function. How did it even work, though? This is the function ending right here. Expected expression got not... Okay. So... Let's see where these parentheses balance out. Okay. Let count equal zero. Let image... So I'm inside a function. So this... This ends the I. And if I did another end, it would end the function. Which I can't see, but okay. Canvas. So I've probably got a syntax error in here somewhere. Context TD canvas. Well, that's exciting. Um. So why does it? Oh, do I have some uncommented code down here that that's ugly? No. I mean, I do, but it's the way it's supposed to be. Do I have something like the very end? This is freaking weird. Okay, so it's something that's unhappy with this um, with this function. Buffer tile object. I J. Uh, no, that's fine. Did I not close off my else statement correctly? Yeah, I did. Um, did I not close off my ooh? Didn't close off my if math random statement correctly. So now I think if I reformat it, it's going to look nice. It's going to show me that I actually did finish off the function. It didn't, but of course I didn't really expect it to do that because it doesn't work. Now let's run it. Syntax error return not in a function. Well... Oh, shoot. Right, because this... So this is the math. This is the i and j loops that end here. So this is the if. This is the inner. This is the outer. And then way down here, we need to end the function. Let's format. That's not bad, actually. Yeah, no, didn't work. Do I need semicolons? I shouldn't. But, um... So this is the end of the else. I think we're okayed up to that point. This is the end of the if. This is the end of the outer inner loop here. And then more function, and then the end of the function here. So what's wrong? Uh, kill for syntax highlighting now. Okay, I, J, blah, 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 blah. Let me comment this out. Yeah, let me comment out this little uh, sort of random logging. We, we do need We do need to have something like this when we have a lot of data. But we don't need to have it right now, necessarily. So this will comment this out. Oh, wow. 
Unless you do this, it won't work. Um, come at this sucker out. And now, it still won't work, but let's see if it gets a better error. Yeah, no, it doesn't. Okay. So... Expected expression not. So you think you're still in a loop somewhere. Now, I think one funk feature that this has is... It lets you collapse... Interesting. It lets you collapse functions. So if this function had collapsed correctly, it would have ended sooner than where we are right now. In other words, this crap here and this crap here would not be showing because it thinks the function ends somewhere earlier than that. So that, I think we can track that down. So balance here, else image data count. Uh, this ends the J loop, this ends the I loop. Okay. And then I just need to end the freaking function. After I do some stuff. Um, anyone in the peanut gallery sees it, obviously tell me. Um, oh, there's no one left in the peanut gallery. Okay, uh, let's see if we can figure this out. Um, expected expression got... So let's go ahead and inside of this do a really quick console log of i, just to see if it's getting through, how many times it gets through the loop before it's unhappy. Maybe zero. Oh, it's not even going to compile this way. Okay. Um. Semicolon here? Maybe. That's the only problem I'm going to be annoyed at JavaScript, but I'm constantly annoyed at JavaScript. Nope. Uh, that did not work. Okay, so let's go ahead and temporarily temporarily get rid of this code, which is I hate when that happens. So I guess that this code belongs here. And we'll just leave the semicolon this this brat bracer. Well, this shouldn't work, so it will. We should have some console logging going on. Okay, it didn't work. Uh, we've got too many PNG images. It looks like we have... This doesn't even make sense now. All right. So at least we're getting this function called with height. Uh, well, let's see how far we get. This is the, uh, this is the standard binary search to see where in the code it's it's asynchronous but this part of it is synchronous enough that we can deal with it cool um, either the function alpha doesn't get called or it's going to get called in just a second here because apparently there is a delay of a hundred billion years okay alpha so it is being called that's fine um, Let's take a look at this image real quickly. This one should have a small red circle in it. You cannot open data URL like that. Yeah, that's not very exciting. That's not right. Um, so let's see. Well, let's not try to log the image right now. That might be a little bit too much for us. But let's go ahead and see if, if we're getting the correct... Uh, why would this be called more than once? But anyway, let's, that's what we're going to find out. And let's run this sucker. Okay, now I've got to look at the map. Yay. Um, X minus 2? Whoa, 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 whoa. That's not cool. Well, it is sort of cool, because we actually do want to paint onto that, but, uh, but man. So it is actually calling it for the values of x that are impossible. Um, so the west, well, yeah, this is really ugly, because the west lo longitude here is 180, but the east longitude is 540. That's just not going to work, um, because our distance formula, well, actually, my, it, okay, 
there's a possibility it really should be working, but that's not that's not what we're going to be doing here. Okay, so somewhere we need to get the map extents, the extensions of where the map is, and buffer tile doesn't need to know about that because it just gets uh, tiles. Um, so apparently wherever it is, we oh, here it is map be get bounds. Um, Okay, map bounds. Okay, so the, the issue is happening here, where we're converting long lat to tile. No. Oh wow! So the problem is going to be actually right here. I think we are basically getting map bounds that are technically correct, but really bad for us. We will overlap la overlapping maps eventually. Um, but we can't do it this way because we we just we're not we're just not set up to do that right now. Um, all right, so I think what we're going to see here is um, I was going to say beta, but I like beta, so we'll just go with that. I think what we're going to see here is the west and east are going to have exceeded um, the the minus one eighty to one eighty range, and that is causing this is probably not causing this problem, but it'll make it easier to debug this problem. So let's see, go see the map. Yay map. Uh where's beta? Oh, I'm sorry, Berta, where's Berta? Okay, she's there. And there she is. And yes, we're seeing that the uh, oh wow. Minus 562 to plus 5, that's not even... Oh, that is sensible because, of course, um, it thinks the map is going all the way from minus, you know, bigger than the... So what we need to do here is, I think we had this earlier, um, and it's not a bad idea to do it from north and south. We need to bound these by, uh, by, the, by appropriate values. And really, for north and south, that's going to be the uh, the latitude and longitude boundary, the long latitude boundary of 85 degrees for Mercator maps, and for east and west, of course, it's just going to be um, uh, it's just going to be uh, minus 180 to 180. Okay, and I think I have a function called uh, bound number that I don't want to use because it's not set up the way it normally is. So let's just be ugly about this and do this. Which is exactly what the other thing does, by the way. All right, so... Um, we can do this with an if statement, too, by the way. Uh, so the maximum of n... No, the maximum of... Oh, come on, where's my... Did I put it into freaking math? Or does it just not recognize my constant? Um, or did, is it a different constant? Uh, doing things right is really hard, so I advise everyone not to do that. Do everything wrong, please. Um, Mercator lat limit. And let's go back to root. Um, mm, where the hell was I? There was a bird in here somewhere. Okay. All right. So we're gonna say um, so if north is. If north is bigger than Mercator lat limb, we're going to shove it down to Mercator lat limb. Um, and again, I mean BC lib dot Mercator. And now it's showing up. So this hideous thing makes sure that uh, uh, if Through this, I'm going to use my bound number function. So bound this between minus and plus. You don't actually need a plus here. 
because it will work, but you don't need it. Okay. When I'm coding for myself, just so you know, well, this is an excuse. When I'm coding for myself, I usually just sort of go with what works, and that's probably what I should have been doing here. But I'm trying to do things right, so it's getting a little bit worse than it normally is. Or I'm just making that excuse. So negative Mercator lat limit and positive Mercator lat limit. Okay. And here it's going to be bound number between minus 180 and 80. And here it's also going to be bound number by, because longitudes can go all the way. Latitudes, in theory, could go to minus 90 and plus 90, but not on the Mercator map. And we're on, we are on a Mercator map. I'm going to stick with the Mercator map. And I probably need to uh, move this comment up here. And I need to get rid of this line. Okay, it still won't work, but now we, we can get a clearer picture of what's going on at that tile zero thing that we're doing. Or we can just watch me fuck up because I don't know how to... That's fine. Oh, yeah. No, that should be okay. After argument with north, get north. Bound number, two arguments. Let's format this to see if it's okay. Okay. Temporarily remove it, see if it works. Okay, so the error is clearly. Oh, it's to do that. Also, didn't even have double comments here. So that's we've narrowed the error down quite a bit. So it's going to be map bound number, bound number, bound number, bound number. All right, let's see what the error was again. Missing blah after argument. Well, let's just put a blah here and see where it, where it tries to take it. <sighs> We're going to do it frickin' one line at a time if we have to. Lucky the first time there. Maps. Get north. That is fine. Min oh, there's a comma here. All right. 93rd billionth times the charm. Oh, cool. It's something is really... Mercator lat limit is not defined. No, it is not. And again, normally I would just put these in the global namespace and not give a damn. Um, but I'm trying to be nice. Which clearly, you know, makes you program worse. Alright. Okay, go look at the map real quick. Nothing, it's not working, which I didn't expect it to. Um, okay, good. Um, so now, for some reason, we're looking at four tiles. Um... X0, Y0, Z that's, that is the only correct tile there is, by the way. Um, so that's, that's good that we have going that far, at least. Um, and then, again, this is asynchronous, I think, so we really should be seeing the PNG image here, but we're not. That's interesting. It looks like it actually fails somewhere, uh, instead of just doing uh, bad stuff. If I made a mistake. That looks actually okay there. Um, this might be a corner case. Oh, damn, it's going to reload now. Okay, this is this a corner case where where Y is getting set to something weird. Um, let's see. We'll 
Okay, let's look for Berta. So no Berta's in there. There we go. Um, all right. So this should actually tell us. And this might be where the problem is. So because we're looking at zoom level zero, we really should just be seeing one tile. Booyah. Unbooyah. Projection one, Z zero. Y. 9.26. <laughs> Yes, we have a, a, a minuscule fraction that is very close to zero, uh, which is brilliant. And it's probably because, of course, uh, floating point error. Um, that, that is awesome. Um, X1. Uh, so one problem is, OK, this is being called twice because we have two different maps. That's fine. Um, it's oddly inconsistent, though. Um, the zoom level should be zero across the board here. It is. And yet, this latitude... Okay, so southeast, northwest. Um, the northeast corner is going to have an X... Northwest corner, right? Mm, that should be one. Should I mean, I meant northwest, southeast, didn't I? I just got the thingy wrong here. All right, we'll just run it again just to clear that up a little bit. Okay, so the northwest corner should be zero zero, and it pretty much is. Northeast corner should be zero one. Oh, that is painful. Because, really, the northeast corner is still within zero. It's, I mean, it's... it's And why the southeast corner is, uh, of course, going to be also zero. I mean, it's one. Well, this should actually be okay, then. Um, okay. So this, unfortunately, means it thinks it has two tiles to go through. Namely, the zero zero tile, which it should go through, and then the uh, zero one tile because of this uh, border case for x. Um, and I think I can actually fix that because we know that x can never exceed um, two to the power of z, can never even be equal to that. Um, so in theory, yeah, but I, I can't fix that, can I? Um, So let's see. So, okay. So the problem here is I'm doing a floor and a ceiling, whereas, oh my god. So what I have to do test here, this is hideously ugly. Um, I have to test that if SEX is exactly equal to the zth power, um, we need to subtract it by one. And I'm just going to call this a kludge because that's what it is. A one-off kludge just to fix this. Uh, we actually need to probably create functions that, when they return the integral integer values of the tiles that are included, uh, take care of this corner case where um, you're getting the very, very western edge of a tile that doesn't actually exist. If, and this is again bad because I'm actually testing... Um, Uh, what is it, Z? Z, Z, Z? Yeah. It's exactly equal. We're going to subtract one from it. I feel like a bad person now. But okay. I can get over it. Still doesn't work, but the debugging might be a little bit easier. Okay, and it is being called twice because we do have two maps on here. Um, those numbers look okay. All right. Well, let's make life even easier. This is uh, pretty much debugging for losers. 
why don't I make this even easier by, in fact, not calling the uh, in, when, during the update, uh, temporarily not calling the, uh, the the other routine. We're just gonna call the uh, place fake tiles of the one routine we're gonna debug. Still break, by the way. No, no, no fear of that. But it's gonna hopefully break in a better way. I need to figure out where this console log is coming from and stop doing that. But Berta. Okay, so alpha, blah, 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 projection one, zero, 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 extra params. Oh, wow. For some freaking reason, it decides why it didn't want. Okay, good. So we can put another occlusion here. La, 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 la. It's always going to be with the... The Y tile can also not equal to the Zeth power, because that's the top edge of a tile that doesn't exist. Okay. Look at map. Hey, good. We're now down to, like, only one scroll here. Um, I don't still don't know why we're printing alpha twice, but y is y equal to 1 here. Holy foley. Because we're taking its ceiling, I'm going to shoot myself. So we don't really care if the value is that, it's the ceiling value. If it's going to end up doing that to the tile, this is, we, we will fix this. Um, because se.y is actually like 0 .9999 something. Insane like that. So uh, we're on take 7,952. Still doesn't work. But now let's see if we can at least... Good, now we actually have um, alpha being called once. Good. Zero, zero, zero. Longitude, latitude, projection one, which doesn't mean anything anymore. Uh, longitude minus 180. East longitude, north, south longitude. Okay, that looks good. So now we can move on to debugging a little bit better. Okay. So it's being called awesome. Um, I is less than the height, so we're going through all the pixels. That's cool. Um, we're not doing that. We are, so we should now be able to just console log the PNG. Now there'll be only one of them, and it should have a little red circle in the middle. It won't, but it should. But this is this is where we test. If it does have a red circle, the problem is in overlaying the map. We. The, uh, now, you normally in uh, Firefox, you can right-click and say open in a new tab, but it doesn't recognize this as a URL, so you can't. Yeah, that's not, that's not looking too good. Okay, but now, now we, we're, we've we sort of limited where our problem is. So we need to see if at any point... Um, data camp plus plus... Right. We're going to print out something that's 65,000 characters long. Um, and right, let's see what it is. If it's all zeros, it's it's wrong. Uh, if it's not all zeros, the problem's occurring somewhere else. Unless I somehow fucked up the opacity. RGBA. We'll just leave it like that for now. Uh, and we're going to uh, log image data dot data. That's the array of uh, pixel values. It's 65,000 longs. So it's going to be a little chunky here. Yep, it's going to take a second for it to, uh, to be angry enough at me to let me do this. Come on, only 65,000 values. We're going to wait. Brother. So happy. I mean, counts only 65. Oh, Jesus. Am I in more of a loop than I should be? And now we're going to stop it. Okay. Not cool. Um, there's a way to print it so that this gets elided, but I don't remember what that way actually is. Uh, so you only see some of the entries. Um, 
Let's see if count is equal to 65536. That shouldn't break. Oh, that's that's kind of cool. That never gets logged. Why not? Will you log it now for me? Two fifty. Okay, I see what's wrong. Um, yeah, the image should not be that small. So, in fact, this is not this image is not filling up the whole. This is just doing the top row. Um, so let's see why that's happening. I equals I less than height. That's two is J J less than height. Longitude latitude convert. Um, I'm getting worried that we're not inside both loops here. And I'm going to worry about that by console logging INJ. This is again going to be a freaking, you know, not very nice, but um, 65,000. And I maybe have to throw a ra Okay, stop, stop, stop. Run. I probably need to stop. So oh, here we go. Yeah, there we go. It's very nice. Zero to zero to zero. Why does it look like it's going to stop too soon? Hey, 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 hey! Okay. So have I fucked up somewhere and not defined height correctly? No, it's there. It's, that's there. Oh, here's console log i. That shouldn't break anything. I'm going to need to get rid of some of these console logs. And at some point I'm going to create a debug function that Let's me turn off and on debugging. Okay. All oh, right. Have to look at the freaking map and have my magic happen here. I zero. Good. 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 And then, am I returning inside of my for loop? This should be the end of the I loop. Oh, it's not. It's the end of the J loop. Wow, wonderful. So I need to end the I loop here. That means I've got an extra right, brace flo floating around somewhere. This is probably the same problem I was having earlier. Now at this point it should complain that my syntax is not correctly formed. doesn't. Okay. Still not working. Okay. 4i equals console log i. Um, I think we can get rid of that, actually. So for j, do this, do this, do that. Blah, blah, blah. Add to the count value and the j loop and then end the I loop. So let's do this. Let's see if something bad's happening here. And yes, I know I'm reusing beta. I don't care. Okay, so we're going to check to see if the value of I, if it makes it through a whole loop or if something really terrible happens. Somewhere in the middle of this, which might be... Uh, well, it doesn't happen before here. It might be this line is syntactically incorrect, but it, it should tell me that. It shouldn't just just stop. Okay, look at map. Shiny. Hey, I looked at the map. Here we go. Okay. I've done something terrible. So it's still running. But now I've broken something. Beautiful. Uh, that should not have broken something. That's a very minor thing to have done. 
So it's possible Replit itself is broken, which which is always a possibility. I'd like not to think about that because uh, because that would mean that I've been wasting a lot of my time. Okay. Suddenly, you are behaving differently. Okay, well, at least we're getting something out of here. All right, cool. We are somehow not even calling the right subroutine. <sighs> okay, so are we getting called? We're getting calling alpha at least. No, we are not. So what's going on here? These console logs, by the way, are coming from somewhere else that we should probably get rid of, uh, or comment out at least. So let's do that. I am lost in the boonies, by the way. Console log map get bounds. I don't think we need that anymore, actually. I think we're okay now. So run, result, move around. Nothing. Gorgeous. Um. Hmm. Let's see if we get this far, then we'll see if we get into, um... We'll see if we actually get into place fake tiles on map. Alright. Okay, here we go. Gamma, gamma. Okay, good, we are. We are getting into... We're getting at least to this point here, uh, where it calls place fake tiles on map. Let's see if it actually gets to that part. Um, what well doesn't get to Berta, so that's not good. Let's see if it gets over here to point delta, which I should really be using the phonetic alphabet instead of Greek letters, but whatever. We... Now, as we're getting more serious about this debugging, Gamma Gamma does not get to this. And why not? So if we're getting more serious about debugging, we're clearly seeing that there's a lot of... Uh, uh, one of the issues is we're calling the URL, and that does take some time, and it does background the other stuff. It does, it does asynchronize, so that happens in the background. That could be causing issues. Um... So we could disable that. I'm getting sort of unhappy with disabling all this stuff. But um, So the issue is it gets to this. We pass it a nice object. And for some reason... Well, let's even go early. Let's actually go ahead and just see the moment it, the, moment the function gets called. It doesn't mean to do that. What did I do? Control X, Control V. Uh, and we'll just look at the object that it gets. Let's see if it's even being called. If it's not, something hideous is happening. Uh, aside from my coding, which of course is also hideous. Okay. Not called until you touch it, which is different from what happened last time. Gamma Gamma, not getting called, place fake tiles on map. So that is not good. Um, and then beautifully, there are no... Let's see what this does. Really? Cool. Um, that clears it. Uh, that gives me help. So clearly, we are, we're something really weird's happening now. We do have a... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and zip save this version. Um, I probably should GitHub push it with a note that it's, it's not working. Um, in fact, let's do that, because then we could quickly jump back to this point if we need to, without having to go through the zip stuff. So that should... Okay, okay, so this is now broken. 
And we need to figure out why it's broken, why all this crap is happening. We could, of course, sort of cache out this index.html file and then edit it until it's only doing one thing, and that might actually be a good idea. Um, get rid of everything here we don't need and then just focus on the, the buffer map. Um, and that's such a good idea that I'm going to see how long I've been streaming. Oh, for one hour, 20 minutes. That's pretty much, I think, the limit of what I want to do for right now. Okay, so I'm going to call the stream uh, to an end right now. I may stream later today. I may not stream later today. That covers probably both possibilities. I might die. I might live. No one knows, really. Um, but for now, I'm going to call this stream, and I think the next step we're going to take here uh, is one I should have taken earlier, uh, sort of copy the index.html file into another file. The problem is uh, Replit will only let you run the index file. And then uh, trim the index.html file down until we're testing nothing but the buffer. And once that works, we can sort of merge the index.html with the cache version. All right, uh, good night, good, uh, whatever. I don't know what time it is where you are. I don't give a rat's ass. Good whatever it is, for whomever it is, goodbye.